here in the lab of schnitzel it's also the home of one of the greatest composers of all time mozart and also one of my favorite things <laughs> it is the musical the iconic the classic what childhood stuff are made of this is the sound of music. So I'm here in Salzburg, Austria. It is just about three and a half hours drive from Vienna, the capital. Now, one of the tours that I've always wanted to do for the longest time is come to Salzburg and do the sound of music tour, which is what, where I'm taking you guys with me today. Now, where do I begin? Let's start at the very beginning. The Von Trapp family house, which is actually now a villa and is technically private property. Take a look. We're not supposed to be here because this is private property, but this is Villa Von Trapp. Take a look at it over here. So we actually just, you know, it was so nice because there was a lady entering, so she actually got to open the gate. So we kind of got to see what it was like inside. And the fact that she didn't close the gate right away, I guess kind of shows that, you know, people are really fascinated by the story of Maria and Captain Von Trapp. Oh, I'm super fangirling right now. Like, I mean, look at my outfit, but anyway. Okay, so you recall that scene where uh, Maria and the whole family were actually escaped because, you know, like Nazi, the Nazis were coming. And this wall over here goes all the way up to the way there. So in Hollywood, the Hollywood version is they hiked up the beautiful hills and they were carrying their children. But unfortunately, we find out today that was so not true. What actually happened was they climbed over the wall because right behind their backyard or right, or right above that wall is actually a train station where they fled to Italy, then to France, and so on and so forth. But that's not really the greatest Hollywood story, right? So now that you guys saw that house, it's really nice, right? And who would have thought? I mean, it was so much nicer knowing that they actually trekked those mountains, but technically they really just rode that train and we even got to see the train station. Anyway, this church behind me is the church that they got married at in the movie. So inside, you can actually see from the top view from the film, the cameras were actually from the balcony where the pipe organ was. So it was like an aerial view. And I even did a shot where I was like walking down the aisle, a sip, I was getting married, and a sip, I was Maria in a beautiful gown. Anyway, that was really exciting. So, St. Michael's Church, the church that I just showed you guys, is actually located in Monsi. It's a really beautiful, quaint village a little bit outside of Salzburg. Take a look at these. It's just like the outfits from the Von Trapp family children and Maria. And that's why I even wanted you to match my outfit today. I know, super corny, but whatever. <laughs> whatever, it's my vlog. <laughs> All right, so you see the hotel right behind me. That's actually the hotel we're staying at. It's Hotel Bristol. This is actually where the cast of Sound of Music stay. And the other hotel that's also just as historical, where Maria, or rather Julie Andrews, and Christopher Plummer stayed at, was the Sucker Hotel. So these two hotels play a major role as well in the filming of The Sound of Music. Okay, so Julie Andrews actually had a young baby with her, or a young child, and so they stayed at the Sucker Hotel. At the same time, Christopher Plummer was staying there too but then he found out that all the nuns who were not really nuns in real life were staying at the Bristol Hotel so he wanted to be transferred here <laughs> smart one and then as for the kids you know they couldn't really party Aww. with everybody else because well usually they had their nannies or they had their moms with them and there is a bar right there that says sketch bar so every night or at least almost every night, there was always a party for the cast of Sound of Music. So this party, Hotel Bristol, was happening all the time. While Maria, or Julie Andrews, I guess, I don't know, perhaps she was having a slight case of FOMO for the fear of missing out, because everything was happening in this hotel. So from 
Moonsi, we actually dropped by this place called Forberg. But take a look at that water. It's kind of like has this greenish tint and it's actually because of some um, sulfur or some something mines that are near here from the Alps. So there's a little bit of phosphorus in it that makes it that color. It's so, so beautiful. It kind of reminds me of that water where when the kids were seeing Do Re Mi and somewhere in the end and then they fell off the boat. This is not the place, but it kind of reminds me of that, that color. So beautiful. Austria for me is just like one big postcard coming to life. And now these lakes are actually private. They're privately owned. They're not owned by the government. Can you believe that, owning a lake? But you know what it also reminds me of? If uh, you guys have ever checked out the, the vlog on my Japan playlist, things to do in BA, where I, I actually show the blue pond. It's a different shade, but it's just as beautiful. So do check that out. Okay, so right now I'm in this place called Fushul and it's fronting a really beautiful lake and there is actually a castle tower that was built into a luxury hotel. Now this is also iconic because in The Sound of Music, the aerial shot from the very beginning of the film, you actually see like, I guess nowadays it's a drone shot, but back in the time it was an actual airplane shot where you see the tower and then it's crossing to this lake, Fushul Lake, and all the way to Wolfgang lake so so beautiful technically this is not really part of the tour but because leo was very nice enough to show us some extra scenes this is leo hi everybody i'm leo <laughs> the nicest guy in town here in salzburg <laughs> see you later <laughs> All right, so we are in another location. This time it's one of those things where you really cannot do it by walking, you gotta take it by car. So, do you recall that scene where the kids and Maria were on a boat and they all fell into the water right across or right in front of the back of their house? And that happened right here. So this lake is fronting that really beautiful palace. It's called Prince Leopold Palace. I believe right now it is a luxury hotel, but in the past it actually used to be the residence of the Prince Archbishop Leopold. And that pink building over there is basically the stables for this palace. Fancy stuff. Okay, now I'm trying to zoom into that house, but you kind of see like those red umbrellas. So those little umbrellas right there, that's the scene where that pretty lady from The Sound of Music, she was serving the lemonade and she was even saying like, aren't these so delicious? And the captain says, yes. And Max being the sarcastic guy that he was, he's like, no, it's a little bit sour. So it actually happened right there. Guys, there's so much information that I'm trying to take in and I admit everything's like getting a little bit confusing. So the Villa Von Trapp house is actually the real house that the Von Trapps actually stayed in. Now of course there's the Hollywood version. Now I've, I'm looking at this very mustardy beautiful um, wall or road and this is actually the part where Maria is singing I have confidence. So you see she's like doing that, that step thing and then she's holding on to her guitar and she's holding onto her luggage and then she steps right into this entrance and then she gasps and does <sighs> so it actually happened right here so you can see this road it's actually very familiar isn't it it's not exactly a yellow brick road but it is a mustard wall from the sound of music so now I'm in this beautiful palace called Hellbrunn and Tori. My heart skipped a beat because do you recognize this? It is the gazebo and look, there's like nobody here. But everybody is like in the park. Anyway, this is like giant palace grounds. And the gazebo was actually transferred here from Leopold's crown. Unfortunately, as much as I would like to do a song and dance from Liesel and imagine my own Prince Charming in France, eight years ago, this gazebo used to be open, but then again, two tourists who were really feeling it did a theatrical act and she broke her leg. Hence, they closed the gazebo for safekeeping. Darn it. But good call though. Very good call. <laughs> 
So, do you recall the scene when the Captain Von Trapp was actually on his way back to the family home and then he passed these trees and he actually saw children hanging from the trees. These are chestnut trees, by the way. And he was even wondering, like, who in the world are those kids? Well, I can't remember the exact lines, but he certainly didn't realize that those were his actual kids who were hanging <laughs> from the trees. And this is the actual aisle or this is the actual row where that actually happened. Okay, so I am in here in this really massive complex in St. Peter's Cathedral or church and inside it was really nice. It really is so coherent with the sound of music because everywhere we go there's like a church choir that's singing everywhere. So inside the church it's really beautiful how ornate the carvings on the ceilings, on the walls, that beautiful organ and at the same time everybody was able to watch and it was absolutely free and that was lovely. So why am I here? Well, one of the locations actually here in St. Peter, Peter's Cathedral is the cemetery. If you recall, somewhere in the end of the movie of Sound of Music, they actually hid. They were hiding from the Nazi Germans. They were hiding in the cemetery and that's where I'm going to go right now. All right, as you can see, escaping. We are now in the cemetery. One of I'm not exactly sure where they were hiding, but if you recall in the movie, they had a lot of those. They were hiding in between, in between like in the back of all those tombstones. So it really is a matter of finding which ones have empty ones in the back. Now, if we were to escape and we were to hide and we were to refer to the movie, I remember these gates, these grills, and they were all hiding in the back of the tombstones as to whether these were the actual tombstones because there's a couple of them all around. And I have to say, considering I'm in a cemetery, it's actually a very, very beautiful cemetery. It's not creepy or heavy at all. I mean, amidst the flowers and yet very ancient or very antique looking tombstones together with something modern and something ornate. It's actually really quite beautiful. Holy shit. I love to exercise, but when you're not, when you're not mentally prepared, it certainly tires you out. So I had to ask directions to get to the theater where the Von Trapp family had performed for Hitler's birthday. And I'm actually right here, right now. <laughs> And um, it's kind of like a cave. It's like a cave of sorts. And this was used as a horse stable back in the day. So the cave actually serves as like really good insulation and for the sound to sound good. Oh wow, here we are. This is the entrance to the theater where the Von Trapp family performed for Hitler's 50th birthday. Obviously the, the exteriors are now very modern, but unfortunately, as you can see, it's closed because of the Salzburg Festival. At least we get to see it from the outside and you can see it in the movie where they actually perform. It's kind of like a cave. And like I said, it was actually used as a stables for horses. Since we are really doing the full-on historical thing here in Salzburg, one thing that I suggest that you do, well, I haven't tried the food, but in terms of history, we're here. This is the oldest recorded restaurant in history. But due to the technicalities, the oldest one is actually in Madrid, only because this one, had to close down due to the war. So Madrid was open the whole time and that makes it number one. But this was actually open in 803 after Christ. Isn't that crazy? So it's been recorded that this has been open at that time. And this is St. Peter's. Okay, so we're having dinner and we decided to get the sea bass and it's really good for two to three people. Honestly, depending on you, it could even be for five people and it's absolutely succulent. We were recommended that we try their own soul. So take a look over here. This is for fish. This is for meats and dessert. This is your normal salt and this is your dark salt. I'm gonna try. 
try a little bit of the one for the fish. So just a little bit. So the salt is mixed with a couple of herbs. It really amplifies and brings out the distinct flavors of the fish. So good. Cheers. So I know this is a sound of music tour and technically this restaurant is not part of the agenda but I decided since it is a historical tour I might as well include it in our Salzburg tour. But in the meantime, why don't I take you guys to our very last location. Check this out. Alright, so we've come to the end of the tour and at least, well, you know what, that's a great thing about having a private tour. You can do any order that you want and we're ending it here at the Mirabel Garden. Here in Mirabel Gardens, you will find different scenes from the Do Re Mi in the back right here. That is where you have the Do Re Mi steps, where the kids are actually going up. So these are the steps right here. As much as I would love to replicate it, every time that we're here, there's always so much fun. But I think you guys get the picture, right? Let's move on to our next location. So this fountain right here is the next location here in Mir Mir Mirabel Gardens where they're actually like sort of like leaping from the fountain in like a really nice circle formation. Now speaking of formation, take a look at that garden. So let's look over here. So I actually didn't know that for a garden to be classified as borough, they actually have to have mirror images of each other from one side to the other, and it always has to have a fountain. So if you take a look at different palaces all over Europe, especially Versailles, if you think about it, it's always a mirror image, and you can only have a Baroque garden if you have that. If you know this all throughout the tour, there was a lot of places that I had to take from afar. Unfortunately, either there was a lake, <laughs> or there was just a wall. Well, it's pretty much because a lot of these things are now private property. But Mirabel Garden, the great thing about it is it's absolutely free. It's open to the public and it's open 24 hours a day. So if you don't want to catch the crowds, come really early or come really late. But if there are no crowds, you're gonna miss certain things like this. stupid and that's okay because you do some really stupid shit for things that you love such as the sound of music and I think that is my cue to say goodbye to everybody with that fun music in the background that is the vibe that you get from the sound of music the sound of Salzburg I'm Bianca Valerio until next time subscribe to my youtube channel bye guys